Hello and welcome. This is Mike Mercer from Mercer Quality Consulting bringing you part two in our training on split plot experiments. In part one we learned a little bit about the nature of split plot experiments especially when they're used with restricted randomization. In this video I'll discuss how to design and analyze split plot experiments using Minitab. We'll take up the example of the compounding and coating line where the hard to change factor is extruder temperature and where the three easy to change factors are coating weight, amount of tachyfier, and cure temperature. Let's open Minitab and proceed with the example. First thing we want to do is go to STAT, then to DOE, then to Factorial, and then create Factorial Design. New in version 16, third down in the dialog box list is the new two level split plot for hard to change factors. Let's go ahead and click it. In this example we have four factors so we select four from the total number of factors selection box. Clicking on the display available designs button allows us to see the full array of split plot designs available for up to seven factors. This dialog box shows a great number of experiments for one hard to change and six easy to change factors. The experiments colored in green have full resolution, meaning that the terms are not confounded with other factors or interactions. If we pick the two hard to change factor tab, we see a smaller set of designs uh, for up to five easy to change factors, still amounting to seven factors, and similarly selecting the three hard to change tab, we see again we have seven total factors with four easy to change and the three hard to change factors. Let's press OK and now press the designs button to select our experiment. I'm going to select the middle design which is a full resolution design. As you can see the basic design has two whole plots one each for the low and high value of extruder temperature. Within each whole plot there are eight subplots corresponding to the two to the three factorial design. Remember, subplots and runs are synonymous in this context. 2 times 8 gives us the 16 runs and the resolution is full. Now remember, the secret to being able to determine statistical significance of the hard to change factor is replicating the number of whole plots. We see under the number of whole plot replicates that the default value is 2. That'll now double the number of runs to 32, which will confirm when we see the design created in the worksheet. Click OK. Next, we press the Factors button. We will customize the name of the factors to enhance the graphical output. We will fill in the name of the hard to change factor, calling it Extruder Temperature. I'm going to add the little uh, nomenclature HTC just to remind me that that's the hard to change factor. It's numeric, has a low value of 200 degrees C and a high value of 275 degrees C. Next I'll name the factor B coating weight. Again it's numeric, has a low factor value of 20 microns and a high value of 30 microns. The next factor will be named amount of tachyfier. It's also numeric and it has a low value of 10 parts per hundred and a high value of 20 parts per hundred. And the last is cure temperature. Again, it's numeric, has a low factor of 150 degrees C and a high value of 200 degrees C. Click OK. Click OK again to create the experiment in the worksheet. It is by default created in run order and we see that it has 32 runs. Just enlarge the sheet here. There's the 32 runs. Next I want to demonstrate the structure of the split plot experiment. Looking under the whole plot column you can see that each whole plot is associated with one value of the hard to change factor extruder temperature. 
Whole plat 1 is uh, 200. Whole plat 4 is a 275. Whole plat 3 is a 200. And whole plat 2 is a 275. The whole plats are not in numerical order because they have been randomized so that we only need to change extruder temperature a minimum number of times. Continuing in my exploration of the structure of the split plot experiments, I want to change how the design is displayed. So I go to STAT, DOE, Display Design. Here I want to do two things. I want to display the design in standard order because I have the adhesion results stored in an Excel spreadsheet organized in standard order. And second, I want to see it coded in coded units to be better able to see the underlying structure. So I'm going to run standard order and in coded units and press OK. And the design reorganizes itself. Whole plots correspond to just one value of the hard to change factor. So whole plot one is for all the low value of extruder temperature minus one, whole plot two is a high, and so forth. Within each whole plot lies a two to the three factorial experiment. Each of the eight runs are called a subplot. You can see the fractional f structure by looking at the columns for the three easy to change factors. Under coding weight, we see minus plus, minus plus, minus plus, minus plus. And under amount of tacker fire, we see minus minus plus plus, minus minus plus plus. And under cure temperature, we see minus 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 plus 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 plus. This is the standard order for a 2 to the 3 factorial experiment. Now I'll copy and paste the values of the adhesion value from an Excel spreadsheet that I've got. Paste cells. There we go. I'm going to go back to the normal layout. And next I'm going to analyze the experiment by going to STAT DOE Factorial Analyze factorial design. In the responses, I'm going to uh, select adhesion and I'm going to go to the graphs and I'm going to select normal and Pareto. And here's the real trick we want to display the effects plots for both the subplot and the whole plot effects. Go down to the residual plots and 4 and 1 is a great way to look at the data. Press OK. Press OK again. Immediately five charts appear. The top chart is a residual plots chart. The points on a normal probability plot are suitably close to the straight line, and that looks good. The histogram chart below is symmetric and normal looking. Remember, there are only 32 points in the plot, so the missing values are probably artificial. The residuals versus the fitted values looks okay. And the residuals versus run order, here called observation order, looks okay. Let's go to the second chart, the effects Pareto chart for the hard to change factor. Here we, here we clearly see that the term is not significant. Next, the Pareto chart for the easy to change factors. From the position of the red line, we see that the first statistically significant factor is amount of attack of fire, a product variable. The next most statistically significant effect is coating weight, another product variable. The last statistically significant effect is a mixture of process and product variables in the interaction between extruder temperature and amount of tachyfier. The terms uh, just below AB and BC are below the statistically significant line and are judged to be not significant. All the rest of the terms are clearly not significant. The next chart is the normal plot of the hard change factor. Here we see from the color that the effect is not significant. It's black. It should be red if it was significant. But the real reason for choosing the normal plot is to see the sign of the effect. See here, it's negative. Now in the easy to change normal plot, we see that coating weight, we see that as coating weight increases, adhesion increases. 
but that as amount of tachyfier increases, adhesion decreases, which is a bit of a surprise here. Also, the interaction term between extruder temperature and amount of tachyfier is also negative. The important learning in this product and process understanding experiment is the amount of tachyfier has a negative effect on the adhesion, which is counterintuitive. Next, we're going to look at the output in the session window. And we can see that the long, the long variable names have uh, really clouded up everything. So what I'm going to do is go in and redo the experiment. So I'm going to go STAT, DOE, Modify Design. I'm going to leave the modified factors alone and I'm going to go specify and what I'm going to do is put in for the uh, factor names the shorter original letter names. And I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to reanalyze it stat DOE factorial analyze factorial design just hit OK again um, I'm going to get rid of all the charts, go back and look in the session window. The first table lists the values of the effects against their p-value. We see that the hard to change factor A, or extruder temperature, has a p-value greater than 0.05 and is not statistically significant. We also see the terms included on the Pareto chart B, C, and AC have p-values less than 0.05, indicating statistical significance. The next table is the ANOVA table. It shows two error terms, the, whole, or the WP error, meaning the whole plot error, and the SP error, meaning the subplot error. This complication in the analysis is what made split plot analysis so difficult in the past. Minitab overcomes this by correctly analyzing the data and presents the correct output. The error between the whole plots is different than the errors within the whole plots. Essentially, between error is called the whole plot error, and the within error is called the subplot error. We can see that the adjusted mean square value of 20 for the whole plot error is much larger than the value 3.4 of the subplot error. It is precisely because of these different error terms that the determination of statistical significance of the hard to change factor used to get messed up. What if we were ignorant of the importance of restricted randomization and we designed the experiment as a fully randomized and replicated two level factorial with 32 runs? But we ran it with restricted randomization. And if we analyze it in a usual way as a two level fractional or two-level factorial experiment, we can use the same data as we have and now view the new Pareto. They would now incorrectly indicate that factor A is statistically significant. And the normal plot also indicates that A, extruder temperature, is significant. This example really demonstrates the impact of restricted randomization on our learning. In this example, which is a real-life example, I stripped out the proper 16 values and then analyzed the design as the half fraction. And as we can see from the hard to change Pareto chart, term A is not significant. From the easy to change Pareto chart, we see that the terms C, B, and then AC were still judged significant. However, we picked up one additional term. The term is an interaction term, extruder temperature and cure temperature. Remember. The penalty for running Resolution 4 experiments is the confounding of two-factor interactions, and that's what happened here. So we were lucky that we can generally draw the same conclusions as before. So in conclusion, we can see that we can now design and analyze two-level split plot experiments as easily as we were able to do two-level factorial experiments. We recognize that restricted randomization is an important concept that we need to deal with up front. We understand the terms whole plot and subplot when dealing with restricted randomization experiments. And we have options regarding the number of experiments we need to run. To be safe, we need to double the number of runs over uh, the number we use in a normal two-level factorial experiment. But we can chance running with the same number as in the two-level 
factorial, knowing it's a resolution four experiment and may be some su and may be subject to some misinterpretation, as we saw in our example. The final element to this split plot experimentation is to look at the last option that was available to us for creating a uh, factorial design. Let's look at uh, the display available designs. Look at the one hard to change factor, three easy to change factors. We have a choice of three experiments to run. We already ran the uh, full 32 run, eight uh, split plots uh, full. We ran the half fraction and if we notice the half fraction is yellow. It means it's not as good as the green. The other one is the whole plot plus the three factor interaction um, experiment and that's the one we'll look at now. So we'll go to the designs. We'll pick this uh, f uh, full factorial with the uh, four whole plots, four subplots, 16 runs, number of whole plot replicates only one so there's only 16. So we go ahead and do that and create the design. Save a little time. Uh, we've put the adhesion values in and you can see that there are four whole plots. One, two, three, and four. And there's only 16 points altogether. So I've saved more time and I've run the analysis and again we find that the hard to change factor is not significant. We find the three factors that we found in the fully replicated experiment, C, B, and AC, are significant. We've uh, found again from the, the normal half plot that uh, while uh, the value um, uh, A, hard to change factor, is negative, it is not significant, it's black, not red. And again, we find that B is positive, C and AC, significant are negative. Now we'll go into the uh, session window and we'll take a look at what the output looks like and we're surprised to see a lot of asterisks because in this design we have to rely on the charts for telling us what are our significant factors. So that's the good, the bad, and the ugly of the split plot experiments. Now you know how to correctly implement restricted randomization in your industrial experiments so good luck! Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with some more tutorial videos demonstrating the new features in Minitab 16.